Lawrence, although my students call me Professor of Percussion. And that's because I teach at five colleges. Uh, let's name them. They are Brigham Young University Provo, the University of Utah, Utah Valley University, Snow College, and BYU-Idaho. That's a lot of thinking about drums and percussion and uh, a lot of driving too, huh? Uh, I'm sitting next to a vibraphone. That's where uh, we'll be demonstrating here in just a moment. Vibraphone belongs to the Mallet keyboard percussion family. And uh, that's the same family that includes marimba, xylophone, and other instruments like that. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, bringing a fresh approach to an old topic. How often have your teachers told you to practice your major scales? And so what do you do? Maybe you go into your practice room and you start at the bottom of the scale and you play up an octave or two and come back down and really are you getting better at your major skills if that's all you do every day if you practice them the same way every day I would present the idea that maybe you're not getting better uh, maybe you're just getting better at how you're practicing the scales rather than understanding your key signatures and the layout of the diatonic keys better and so uh, the two ways that I'd like to talk about for bringing some variety to your major scale practice, and this, by the way, could be applied to any, any scale, not just major scales, but all your minors and uh, other scales that we'll talk about in the future. And so uh, let's pick a scale, and uh, I will demonstrate now what I'm talking about. First of all, uh, we'll just choose the first letter of the alphabet and we'll play an A flat. Uh, quite often, maybe what you've done is play a scale starting at the bottom. Pretty boring. You don't really get much better practicing like that every day. Even if you do two octaves, which you always should do, by the way, uh, two octaves helps you change the sticking when you get to the second octave. If you start with the left hand, when you get to the next octave, you're starting with the right hand. The first aspect of variety that I'd like to bring to your scale practice is something known as patterns, pattern practice. And so, uh, let's take a look at a few possibilities for practicing scales with patterns. One of them would be, uh, you know, if we were to put numbers to these notes, and we call this one, two, three, four, we could do one, two, three, two, three, four, two, can't count that fast, but uh, you get the idea. And then the next day, maybe you could practice in another fashion altogether. This would be like one, three, two, four. Maybe the third day, you could decide to play one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. That would sound a little like this. Five, so one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. Go the full range of the instrument. And then maybe the next day, you're going to do this pattern. And finally, one, eight, nine, two. And I say finally, but really there's an unlimited uh, number of patterns that you could use to practice your major scales. Making it pretty exciting, you got to come up with something new every day. Now you have to engage your imagination. Not a bad idea. Okay, our second uh, fresh approach to scale practice would be the flexible scale. The flexible scale has the following characteristics. Number one, you can start on any degree, not just on one, but any degree of the scale. And, uh, and so uh, not only could you do that, but you could change directions, go any direction you'd like. Um, use stepwise motion as well as intervallic leaps, fun, and let's say we include a little rhythm and a little expression. Here is that same A flat major scale played in a flexible fashion. flexible scale. Hope you enjoyed that. So keep these uh, two methods in mind, playing scales in patterns and playing scales in a flexible fashion. I think they'll bring 
uh, nice rewards and a lot more fun to your scale of practice. Thank you. Thank you.